In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this. It is a Raspberry Pi 4 based tablet. Inside is a 4 gig Raspberry Pi single board computer. I've also put a sound card, an accelerometer, and a fan speed controller with, of course, a 5000 milliamp battery. So it's got enough power to keep you through the day. I have a camera over there. I have got two speakers on either side for stereo audio and at the back it has a very nice wood back. It also has a built-in accelerometer which can orientate my screen according to the way I hold it. And there is active cooling by way of a fan which comes on and off according to the temperature of the CPU. On the side over here I have got an audio jack and in the front I've got my USB breakout, I've got a volume controller, I've got a power button over here and indicator lights for activity and charging. So if you want to see how I made this tablet then stick around. Hey guys once again thank you for joining me my name is Conrad Devet and this is Innovate Asterisk. In this playlist, we've got something new. It's prototyping. And in this case, we've got a Raspberry Pi 4 with 4 gigs of RAM running a Raspberry Pi tablet. That's right. We've 3D printed the case, bought all the pieces off uh, various websites like Amazon. Little piece of wood at the back to just finish it off very nicely. Inside, I've got three services running in Python. It's a fan speed controller which controls the speed of the fan that's sitting right over the CPU. It's monitoring the temperature of the CPU and can adjust the fan according to the temperature of the CPU. Then I've got an audio controller. So this controller is connected to the GPIO and allows you to adjust the volume up and down. Then I have a screen service which is monitoring activity from the gyroscope an accelerometer and orientating the screen and that is our Raspberry Pi tablet. Now I'm going to take you through all the steps that is involved in making this tablet so you can try it yourself. I'd love to see what you guys manage to do so if you have any feedback or anything like that please post it in the comments send me pictures of what you've done that would be great to get your feedback on this. So this is how we make a Raspberry Pi tablet. So let me start by showing you where you can get all the files that you need in order to complete this project. If you go to GitHub, type innovate asterisk slash Raspberry Pi tablet, just like that, there'll be a link in the description. Here we have everything that you need. There's the STL file with the, uh, the battery tray, the buttons, level 0, 1, 2, 3, if I go back, I'll get the G code that you need in order to etch the back design. There's also the services and the, the .py files for the various different services. First of all, we need a Raspberry Pi, four gigs of RAM. So this is our computer. This is the, the motherboard that's gonna sit inside this uh, tablet. Then of course we need the uh, official 7 inch touchscreen. Then of course we need some power. So this is going to be the battery management system. This is the Pi Juice. Inside here we get a battery and the board. We're not going to use this battery. So this is the battery we're going to use with that uh, Pi Juice. It is the 5000 milliamp battery. Then of course we're going to need a Raspberry Pi camera. So this is the Raspberry Pi camera version 2. Okay, in the components we're going to need the wave share, audio hat. Then this is our MPU 6050 accelerometer. You will need some press buttons. Now the Pi juice and battery system doesn't come with a pull-apart connector, three cable. So 
This is just a simple uh, pull apart connector. Now these are just general cables and, and the, the coloring is important here because we will have a color scheme. This one is a 128 gig uh, SD card. It should say class 10. Some really small little speakers and the speakers, pretty common sort of shape and size. They look like that. This is the MOSFET based fan speed controller. If you want to know the model number, it's HW517. Breakout USB. So this one is going to be attached to the side of the case. Now, Latte Panda make a very nice, very low profile fan. This is a seven millimeter, that's this, this height here, seven millimeter fan. Now this is quite an important step and something you can use your own imagination with. This is a power cable. It actually came with the Raspberry Pi. But the reason why I use the one which came with the Raspberry Pi is it's a 18 AWG. It's the resistance on this cable, right? You want to use a low as possible resistance or a low as possible um, AWG in order to get the five volts from the, the power supply to the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to open it up here. There you go. With the battery in place. This battery is a uh, 1800 or something like that 1800 there you go a 1820 uh, milliamp battery which just isn't going to be enough power for us let's have a look inside the camera box this camera is is not a automatic focus unlike this camera that I'm using to shoot this video which is constantly trying to find focus this camera that comes with uh, or was made for the Raspberry Pi doesn't have that ability so what you have to do here you can see there's a little protective thing I'm not going to take that off now but you put this onto it like that and you twist it of course here is the, the actual Raspberry Pi. Of course, something which I find a bit strange, there's no indication of the amount of RAM on that box. So whether you have one, four, what's it, one, two or four gigs of RAM, it doesn't actually say anywhere how much RAM is on this board bit strange so if you've got a bunch in your drawer you'll have to actually boot them up to find out you know how much RAM they've got then the battery the MI battery comes with this connector on the end but uh, you can either find the actual opposite connector for that but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my my disconnect cable here. I'm going to then fix it to this cable here. And so I have my own disconnect like that. I have the screen. Essentially, the back of it is already in place. All right. It's been screwed in and it's got these screws so essentially it's got these this touch interface connected here into into that receiving side over there and the actual screen part from here so that black thick black thing is what is connecting the actual screen it comes with its own little ribbon cable Here's the parts. We've got a Raspberry Pi. 
we've got the power supply with a upgraded battery we've got the sound card that are going to connect to these external speakers so then we've got a gyroscope or acceler accelerometer by way of the the uh, MPU 6050 and that'll that'll orientate our screen when we turn it we've got a fan to cool it down which is going to be controlled by our fan speed controller our PWM based one and we've got a camera for taking pictures and doing video conferencing and that will be our tablet I'm now going to show you how to strip the Raspberry Pi down to something the size of flatness of a Raspberry Pi Zero so that only these components there and that component there is the highest points really so the main thing to get off are these parts over here now we're going to break out our USB onto a separate cable so to speak USB 3 we're not going to be using at all and then uh, the wired network card we're not going to be using uh, we're only really going to be using uh, wireless so we don't need that at all now the problem is to unsolder all of these you're probably going to damage the board and you will also see that there are these uh, fairly large uh, soldered pieces of metal that come through the board now the, the problem with that is that if you try and solder these off um, you're going to you're going to damage the the board and we most importantly we want to leave this operational afterwards so let's get to it i'm going to use a um a tool like this now you can you can sort of use your own imagination and find something similar but it's got quite a sharp nose over there okay and uh it's got a spring but essentially the uh, the cutting surface is very close to the edge on that side uh, you can use something similar but this came with my 3d printer and it's been very useful so a tool something similar to this would do the job <music> That's what you're left with. A couple of pins sticking out of the board. Okay, on to USB 3. So, similar sort of process. We'll pop the back.
absolutely nothing on the board and no damage. These are the pins that we're going to solder onto later. So those are fine. We're going to leave that late for later. Okay, on with the network card. But in order to do the network port, we need to give it a bit of a trim over here. So if power over Ethernet is brought into this board, there's a special hat then it takes the power from here, which will probably be at PoE power, like 48 volts or something like that, and steps it down to 5 volts and puts it into the board through the GPIO. So this over here is only for if you are in fact doing power over Ethernet, which we are not. So off you go. about the fourth or fifth time I've done this I've got quite good at doing it also know where to be careful um, and where you can be a bit rough with these uh, boards right so this one is in absolutely perfect condition after the Ethernet port has been taken off after the USB 2 port has been taken off and the USB 3 port has been taken off. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work with the 7 inch LCD display. Now it's already quite flat but one of the things that we want to do here is we want to take out some of these pins and rearrange some of the screws because they get in the way of our design so we need to put some of them directly onto the board and others we need to take off completely the one thing we do need to do is remove this USB because if you look at the profile of that the one thing that sticks out is that USB and the battery is going to sit above here so that's going to be in the way so for that job I'm going to use a pliers so I'm going to use a pliers it's only soldered on over there there and then it's got some pins at the back but if you simply take a, a pliers, you'll be able to pull that off quite easily without doing any damage to the PCB board. And then just rock it back like that a few times and it all pops off. Okay, then in terms of our design we're going to keep this pin and that pin but to take out this pin and then I'm going to take this pin out like that so that we are left only with that one and that one next is the pie juice 
power supply. So in order to clean up this guy, we've got a couple of items which are sticking out, which are reducing its, which are making it quite fat. <music> Now, the thing to remember about the pie juice is that the circuitry that is made up over here, that these pins over here, they're incredibly fragile. So as soon as you work with these pins over here, you've got to be very careful because if you pull on these, they do uh, damage the PCB board. This board is printed very delicately and it can damage it quite severely if you pull too hard on that. But I want to show you how to take this off and there really is only one way to do that. Now, I've done this a couple of times so I know but there is only one way to take this off and it's with a nice hefty pair of pliers. So you take the pliers like that right and then you just start working it up and down. So you see which way I'm doing it? Up and down. Start on one side, up and down. Now that up and down action like that starts to loosen the pins underneath there, right? It's going to loosen it like that. Can you see how it's starting to come? You loosen those pins and then pull, right? Eventually it just pops right off. Okay, so there you go. Now we've taken those pins off, at least that we've taken the plastic off. What we are going to do is we're going to give this guy a haircut because we don't need these long pins over there. And there you go, I've cut it all off. And that's all that you're left with. Now this board can be placed flat on top of the of the LCD. I have two pins on this side and I have power, power and ground. The next one I want to show you is similar to the one we've just done is the PWM controller. Okay, so this is going to control our fan. We're going to connect our fan power terminals to there and the battery to there and then the PWN to the GPIO over there. But again, we need to get this off. In order to get this off, we need to do some cutting. <music> soldered board the jumpers that were on there those blue blocks and are gone okay and that's the sort of profile we're looking at pretty thin fits in our case nicely these screws are pretty useful okay the screws that came out of this go into the empty slot slots of the back of the LCD panel and they're of the correct height that they don't push down against the back of the LCD. So you'll see there 
The WaveShare audio hat also needs to be prepared to some degree in order to fit in our case. And we need to do two things. First of all, we need to cut these pins off and these pins. And then we also need to take this off because as it stands, it does not fit very nicely into our case. Two pins there, on the other side, one pin there, I've got one pin there, and then two on this side, and two on that side. Right, something simple next. It is 30 millimeters by 30 millimeters by seven millimeters and that is essentially going to fit over our CPU and you can see that why it was selected is because it's got a very low profile if you have a look at the following components, we've got the Raspberry Pi, we've got the Pi Juice, and we've got the Audio Hat. Essentially, they were designed to fit on top of each other like that. Right? They're hats and they sit on top of each other. And if you have a look, we kept these three pins, or six in total, but these three pins down on this side, we kept those three pins. We also kept these four pins over here, but we didn't even use the top two but essentially we're saying that these six pins over there are very important in terms of the audio we use the pins down here on this side as well but with pi juice we use nothing but the top six pins and that would fit like that on top of the raspberry pi so if i were to trim this raspberry pi with the pins that we don't need and in such a way that we could fit the fan on top of this area over here. I could safely say that the first six pins would be quite useful to leave, and then we could cut away everything else here, because we can always solder onto the, the reverse side of the board, but it is more much easier to uh, solder onto these pins if they're exposed. Either way, we don't have that option with this case, so I'm going to leave the top six pins and cut off all the rest. I have Fusion 360 open now. And this is my, my model. Uh, this is the enclosure that is going to house our Raspberry Pi tablet. So I'm just gonna take you through some of the elements so that you can see what it is that you're gonna be printing out with your 3D printer or a friend's 3D printer or whoever's 3D printer you can get your hands on. Um, the, the model is made up of various layers. You can see these different layers over here. And it was modeled essentially upside down. So it was modeled this way around. And I'm gonna take the wood backing off and I'm gonna show you inside. So here is the battery. 
this is the Raspberry Pi and this forms the the lid the back of the of the case I'm going to show you here with the section analysis if I just select over here and pull that back and here we go you can see the different elements and how they all fit together so that is a cross section um, over here you can see there's the back plate of the LCD and then the actual glass over there and that fits in to this little ridge over here which was part of layer zero layer one layer two and then layer three at the top here okay so that is our 3d model uh, of the various different elements and you can see how the board the raspberry pi board sits inside there and things like the power button and the volume rocker are designed to sit over there uh, let me take that off and take you through some of the pieces so we took off the lid now we can take off level three which is the back bevel over here and that's what you should be seeing and working on it inside the case most of the time you can see that the battery sits on a little uh, tray and that tray is anchored with these pieces over there that go around the pins so that's why it's important that we leave that so i can take off the battery and i can show you there you go there is the tray and these circles are just here to reduce the amount of plastic that you use and reduce the printing time so this is designed around a 2.2 millimeter uh, construction all the walls and panels are all 2.2 millimeter so if we take off the battery tray we'll have access to more of the elements inside so that's a sort of a good layout Like that and that will show you all the different elements so the Raspberry Pi is going to be sitting over here your camera tucked in underneath over here the LCD controller over here your accelerometer and gyroscope over here the sound card over there the fan speed controller over here your breakout USB over there and your power supply and of course the battery that came in here with the battery tray sits on top okay so that has access you now have access to everything over there of course the little speakers get stuck down on top of this area over there i've included some uh, clips on the side here these clips are so that the the lid part uh, uh, sits nicely on top of the side walls here are little holes for you to put screws into nuts into so that you can screw the lid on and they of course have corresponding holes in the lid so that gives you a first of all a marker hole to drill through the wood lid and um, then the actual seat that it sits in hexagonal sp uh, space for you to put the nut in the plastic nut that comes with the with the uh, pie juice kit uh, there's your volume rocker and your power button so the press buttons will fit inside that little space over there so that's been uh, carefully uh, measured out to fit those buttons and any soldering and extra wires can fit in these little holes over there it'll grab it by essentially this plane here and this plane here and it'll have a back plane to push up against over there and then the actual button will push against that you'll see how we construct that in a, in a moment uh, turning it around on the other side you can see that uh, this holds the indicator uh, nylon for 
power and activity. Um, nothing else is really terribly exciting on this layer. So I'm going to now take off layer two, which layer two contains all the components. So I'm also going to take off the uh, power supply, the amp or the sound card. I don't actually need the Raspberry Pi at this moment either, your USB, and of course, volume buttons. Okay, and I also need my gyro. Where's gyro? Gyro and fan speed, uh, span speed controller. And you're left with this layer, which is layer one, really. So layer one holds the camera and the fan. So you can see there's the fan seated on top of this area here. And the air goes in those little holes over there, goes in these little holes here and gets blown against the, uh, the CPU and essentially the whole bottom part of the whole underneath side of the, of the Raspberry Pi. And then it will actually exit out the back. If I put level two back on again, you can see I've left some fan holes there, but essentially it'll just go out any gap on the, uh, on the other side. So what's important though, is it sucks in here in a fairly tight manner. The air sucks in here and blows out here, which is right over the CPU. Of course our uh, camera. So that's the camera there. And that's that level. You can see I've taken off those two pins that are on that side and that side and left the two pins there and there as shown earlier. That is level one. Take off the fan, take off the camera and we are down to essentially level zero, which holds the the LCD, not really the backplate, but the LCD glass and backplate go together. So those two elements there are how that grips the LCD inside there. Now this model was done exactly according to the specifications measurements of the supplier. So from that distance to that distance, that distance to that distance, all that kind of stuff was done exactly according to the supplier documents. So let me see if I can show you that. If I go to LCD backplate and sketches, if I go to edit sketch, you'll see that I've taken all the measurements directly from the supplier uh, and you can check me if you, if you like, but essentially all those, all those uh, measurements are absolutely correct. But what does inevitably happen is that there is a little shift in manufacturing or whatever the case may be, or even a shift in your 3D model when it actually prints it out. Uh, when, when you print the level two, that's this one here, they're very tight against the plastic. So there's a 0 0.2 tolerance in most of the items, most of the measurements. So you might need to do a little bit of sanding and cutting with the blade to make sure that that sits in nicely. When you put the screen onto the case. The 3D printing work is now done. The front bezel, this is layer one. This is layer two, layer three. 
and then we're going to do something with the, the back lid and then this is the battery which actually is the battery holder which or battery tray that essentially sat over there I also have the volume rocker and the power button now as I said my printer isn't the best but here you go I've got a little bit of fluffy uh, tracks over there from the printing head so you can see it's not great condition there's a lot of layer lines can you see the layer lines over there this one especially you see the layer lines there all right so the purpose of the next step now is to ready the plastic now this plastic has been pr printed in PLA now PLA is fine it's got a pretty low melting uh, temperature and the 3d printer is not great but it doesn't really matter because what I'm going to show you is how to make the case look perfect even if it wasn't printed perfectly so there's various things we have to take into account first of all the side walls we're going to smooth those out until they glassy and perfectly straight there's these little holes over here for the various different things and we're going to make that look nice and neat going to make sure that these vent holes are also nicely cleaned out and all these little strands that you pick up over, like over there I don't know if it'll focus on that you can see all those little strands little hairs and we're just going to clean those all up okay the point is that it doesn't matter what the print really looks like so long as it printed fairly accurately and that you had good bed adhesion so I'm not sure if anybody is aware of what the best way to get a good adhesion on the Creality printer is. You need alcohol. Just press it on there. Put the alcohol onto the, the uh, end of that. Um, rub the glass. There you go. Print stick. All it takes. Okay rub this over the glass I give it a good generous coating and print away the important thing about the way this model was designed is that that surface is then although it's printed this way is then turned around and then the next layer is then glued on to it this way it's just normal uh, Loctite glue and we take our glue line it up neatly and glue this surface to that one in the correct place remembering that the speaker holes are like that
now is the time where we start to sand this. Um, we've got our bolts, or essentially our plastic bolts, glued in there to all the sides. We've got some leftover screws from when we uh, took apart the, the LCD. So they go in there very nicely. And <coughs> we've got the nylon over there, which give us access to uh, a, a light indicator over here. And we have another one for the charge controller over there. We have the lid, which just loosely snaps on there. And that should be our case. Now I'm going to recommend uh, 100 to start with. So what I want to do now is I want to take this piece and I want to sand it on all the surfaces. All right, These are the surfaces that are facing the outside. Now previously we glued this all together and you will see why that doesn't really make a difference that this is messy like this because the glue is going to sand off and we'll be left with smooth PLA. Your case should be looking something like this by now. All right, you can see that it's quite rough, right? All the areas have gone gray that you've sanded, right? But there should be no shiny black, no shiny black surface coming through. Right, so now that it looks like this, it needs to be sanded again with a finer grain sandpaper. So now we're looking for something in the 400 to 800 range. As you get higher in the grade of sandpaper, you'll notice that it got, starts getting smoother and smoother, right? And starts getting some of the color back, like that. All right, keep going until that's absolutely smooth. Okay, you'll get to a point that no matter how much you sand, it's just not going to look any smoother, right? It should be pretty smooth to the touch now. The problem is that you can sand and sand as much as you like at this point. It's not going to get any smoother. So the next step is this, Brasso. Okay, it's a rubbing compound. And basically, all it will do is it will strip a very thin layer of this plastic off you just apply it with a cloth and rub so you've been rubbing away with um, rubbing compound but you're still not getting a very nice finish and the truth is you can pretty much keep going all day it's never going to get you a good finish this is the finish that you're after okay let me see if I can get it to focus on that there you go so once the rubbing compound the brasso has done its job it's really going to make the plastic the PLA in a perfect perfect condition for spray paint so the spray paint I used once I'd finished with the brasso and everything is this is it rust-oleum you can give it a spray one single coat of paint and this is the finish that you should expect to get right. I'm going to now prepare the various components like for example my accelerometer my sp fan speed controller uh, the sound card the power usb and some of the switches even battery all for for wiring 
So the way we're going to do this is we're going to wire all of these devices. For example, the fan can be wired to the fan speed controller. We're going to wire them all, and then we're going to fit them to the case. And the reason why we're going to do it this way is because working inside the case is kind of difficult. So if we wire everything on the outside and then put all the components into the case and then cut and join the wires up, it's far easier. It's now time to start putting the co components into our case. And I'm going to start with the LCD display. So that's this guy here, our seven inch touchscreen. So if I put it down like that, then orientate it like that fits neatly inside there. There's only one thing you need to bear in mind here, that during the printing process, there can be a bit of shifting. Can you see that? It's not perfectly in line there. So you need to just take the sandpaper out or the knife and cut some of the edges so that uh, it fits in there nicely. After you have inserted all of these items into the case, I ended up having to use a slightly longer ribbon cable for the camera so that it would wrap around. So it folds underneath, goes over the top and in there. The display ribbon cable turns around, goes across over to this side and then connects onto the underside of the Raspberry Pi over there. This is what you're left with. Uh, you've got all the cables that are not ended off, speaker cable, other speaker cable, and all of this cable here, including another power cable to the Raspberry Pi. Now, it is just a case of matching up all the colors together. So red connects to red, orange to orange, green to green, yellow to yellow, essentially according to the diagram. And there is the final wiring. We've joined all the wires together. You'll see the little joints have got insulators on them as well. So while you were assembling your board, you would have had the one half of the wire in and then joined to the other half over there. You can see we have the fan speed controller, the audio hat, the accelerometer, the Raspberry Pi, and of course the power controller, the battery controller unit over there. So that all connects to the battery and I have just uh, glued the battery to the bracket. I can then connect this up to there and put the battery in place over there. It fits in there quite nicely. 
Now, the one thing we haven't done is set up the operating system. So this will, although switch on, the screen won't come on. In order to make the lid, the back lid of the Raspberry Pi tablet, we need to put a piece of wood essentially inside there. So I have something like that, which is um, three, three millimeter, 3.5 millimeter bamboo wood. And now I've cut it out to about the right size. So the size dimensions is 112 millimeters by 200 and 30 millimeters and um, you're going to need to sand it a bit and especially on these edges here so you want to make that a round edge so and there you go i've now sanded the board and it fits nicely inside in order to etch our design onto the back piece of wood we need to generate g code to give to our 3d printer this is the one with the laser attachment on it. Now, I went through various iterations to try and find the best solution for that. And it turned out that creating a single image and having that image render onto the wood gave the best results. And I used a website over here and I'll send a link in the description. But essentially with the following settings installed, and the file selected over here. I'm gonna show you a preview of it. it. Essentially, it creates this file as an output, right? Now, I know it's upside down and inverted, but that's just the way it works. This file can be converted into G-code, and from the G-code, you can give that to your printer. So I can choose G-code here and save the output. It will then generate me the G code that I need in order to give to my printer. So I'm going to take this G code now and write it to a flash drive so that I can print it with my laser attached 3D printer. And there you have it essentially hot off the press this is our 3d printed etched uh, print on the back I'm going to now place it inside the case which would fit nicely now I'm going to glue it in and then in order to install the Raspberry and operating system that we're going to use now to test the various uh, aspects of this tablet we're going to go to raspberrypi.org and i'm going to go to downloads and i'm going to download the raspberry and operating system i'm then going to choose raspberry and dust buster with desktop i download that file unzip it and flash it to the flash drive using etcher with the image file extracted onto, say, for example, the desktop, launch Etcher. Take Etcher, add it as the source, select target. That will be your flash drive and then flash. Click continue. Now remove the flash drive from your computer and insert it into the Raspberry Pi. With the flash drive inserted, you can now go ahead and boot it up for the first time. Press and hold the but power button for two seconds. Your screen should show something like this and indicating that it is going to re be resizing the drive partition. It automatically reboots after resizing the drive partition. You should now be presented with the configuration desktop screen. 
I'm going to tap next and next. I'm not going to set a password for now. The screen shows a black border on the top. No, it doesn't. So I'm going to just go searching for wireless networks. Please wait. Configure the wireless environment. At this point, to type in the password, you're going to need an external keyboard. My keyboard and mouse were picked up immediately. At the next screen, I'm going to skip the update for now. We'll do that later. And then the setup is complete. You should now be on the wireless network. So the wireless network will allow us to use PuTTY or SSH to connect to this machine, but we just need to make a few changes. So go on to the Raspberry Pi icon on the top left, go to Preferences, and go to Raspberry Pi Configuration. Click on Interfaces, and click on SSH Enabled. While you're there, you might as well switch on your camera, uh, IC2, SPI, and click OK. It'll ask you to reboot. We're going to reboot. But the next time we reboot, we're going to connect to it in SSH using PuTTY or SSH directly. I'm going to log into my Raspberry Pi. So SSH Pi at Raspberry Pi dot local. Yes. Raspberry is the default password. Now that I'm here, I'm going to elevate my privileges because I'm going to be installing things. sudo su. Now I'm going to apt get uh, update. To install the audio hat, you need to download the install file from git so git clone that's our parameter https github.com wave share wm8960 audio hat then we're going to go into that directory and we're going to install using the command install.sh My audio card drivers are now installed so I just need to reboot and log back in. I've logged back into my Raspberry Pi again. Now there's a command that I want to show you a play minus L basically it's going to show me all the playback devices there are and there are a few then I'm going to say a record minus L <clears throat> and that's going to show me my capture card capture devices essentially it's my microphone and it's only available on the sound card because there's no microphone built into the Raspberry Pi now these devices over here these multiple uh, playback devices do cause a bit of confusion with some software so I want to make sure that there's no other sound card other than the, the, the audio hat sound card and there's no other microphone other than the, the one on the sound card as well. In order to do that, we need to edit the config file. So I'm going to use sudo and then I'm going to say nano uh, boot and then config.txt. So I'm here now and I'm looking for HDMI drive and I would like to set this to 1 and that will make it work almost like a, a DVI connection then I'm going to go down to the bottom here and I'm going to take the audio here this DT param I'm going to take it off by commenting, commenting it out and then additional parameters I'm going to use this one here which is 
HDMI, ignore EDRD audio one. I'm going to press Control S to save it, X to exit. Now I need to reboot again, so see you after that. I've logged back into my Raspberry Pi and I'm going to take another look at that command. A play minus L. It's now got one sound card device. So that's what we're looking for. Now I'm going to install necessary drivers for Python to be able to access the sound card drivers. So I'm going to install things. So I'm going to put myself as super user. I'm then going to install the sound library files. So if I paste that there, you'll see apt get install lib a sound dev. Okay, those are the files that's got some header files and things that we need in order for Python to be able to communicate with the sound card. Then I'm going to use Python pip, but I just want to make sure that it's up to date. So I'm going to make make sure that I update my wheel. Okay, that's up to date now. I'm going to go and install with pip. Okay. Um, Pi Alsa Audio is now installed, so I can communicate with it via Python. Now I am going to install the services that I require. So to do that, I'm going to exit myself from the sudo environment and I'm going to be back at my Pi login. So now I'm going to go to Git and I'm going to download the services that are required. So I'm going to Go to this address, git clone, HTTPS, github, innovate, asterisk, raspberry Pi tablet dot git. Okay, I have now have got a folder called raspberry Pi tablet and inside there, there should be a folder called services and inside there are the services that we need. The audio, the fan and the screen. The power one we're not going to use for now. In order to run my Python file as a service, I'm going to first double check to see that my Python script is in fact working correctly. So I'm going to use this command over here. And then I'm going to press up volume and down volume. Okay, there you go. Volume is increasing and decreasing. So that's looking great. Press Control C to exit. So my audio audio Pi script is working and it's adjusting the audio, the volume. Now I can make it into a service. So in order to do that, I'm going to choose sudo nano lib system d system Pi tab audio. That's the service that we're making. So that part is what we're making. Enter. It's going to give me an empty file and I want to put this descriptor in in order to make my service. I'm just giving it a description and I'm just saying Raspberry Pi or Pi tablet audio service and then press Control S to X to save it. Control X to exit. Now that I have created the service file, I'm going to systemctl daemon reload and that brings in the service and then I need to also enable it by enabling it and basically saying it must start up at the beginning with the computer. Might as well just start it. So I've now start, started it. I'm now going to install this the screen service the screen service is responsible for handling the rotation of the screen as you handle the tablet so once again i'm going to make a service file and inside there i'm going to put my service description only thing you need to uh, note in this one we're running the service as a user 
time. That's because the logged in user, which is us, is going to need to access the screen and it can only do that as a logged in user. So control S, control X, exit it. I'm then going to reload again. I'm going to enable the service and I'm going to start the service. The service is now started. The last one I'm going to do is the fan. If there's a, a fan built into this tablet that when it gets a bit hot, it's able to cool it down by switching on the fan with the PWN instruction. So this one again back onto root, it's the, pa the, pi, the Pi tablet fan service, control S to save, X to exit, and the same story, I'm going to now reload, I'm going to now enable, And I'm going to switch it on. You might hear your fan starting. That is because it could have got quite hot during the setup and installation process. If you are uh, getting a bit annoyed with the fan that it comes on quite often, we can go to Nano and we can edit the fan and change the settings basically up until 50 degrees the system won't have the fan on between 50 and 60 degrees uh, the fan will be at 60 percent 70 percent and above 75 percent or 75 degrees if that's in celsius uh, it's going to be at a hundred percent fan so you could, for example, only bring on the fan at, for example, uh, 55 degrees. Now that these services are installed, I'm going to restart my computer. I'm now going to install the PyJuice software and GUI tools. In order to do that, quite simple, I just use the apt-get install command I want PyJuice with GUI GUI okay and uh, that's going to be the my graphic user interface because it is a, of course a tablet so I'll be able to see what it's doing right and there you go that is the final product I've managed to put some screws in here around there and I have those two screws over there I found six really nice screws so we can now take off the protective layer and this is our final product right I've come around here so that I can show you some of the features that we've installed onto our Raspberry Pi Hopefully this will be a bit clearer to you. So there is the Raspberry Pi starting up. Okay, it's reasonable enough. Not the greatest picture, but there you go. So you can just miss that setting. And we've got our power, so that's our power over there indicating our battery. I'm going to go to um, preferences, I'm going to go to high juice settings, and there you go. I'm pulling one amp of power, and the battery is at 83%. I get a lot of data corrupted, anyway. Obviously, that's something to do with the 
uh, API that goes on in the background, background. So I can dismiss that. Uh, let's go and, well, you can't really see it or hear it, but I can hear the fan going in the background every, uh, every now and again, cooling down the machine. So the fan is working. Um, now let's see, I'm gonna go and test the audio. So let's go to, let's just go to something like that for screen. Okay, now I'm gonna need the keyboard. So I'm gonna plug in my USB, which is of course another good test. So plugged in the USB and now I can go to you. Got it. There's some audio. Let's turn that up a bit. Volume is working. Down. Seems to have a big jump at the beginning, but there you go. Can turn the volume up and down. Next thing to demonstrate is the screen rotation. So if I turn it up, there you go. I get my screen this way. If I turn it sideways, they're back again on the same width. Right. Oh, right. There you go. All right, it needs to be fairly upright, but that's fine. So the, there is the screen rotation. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And well, I hope you give it a try yourself love to see what you guys can come up with so the next question I have is is this in fact a tablet it's running a desktop operating system and that is the Raspberry and OS now that was used in order to make it all work but is it really a tablet it wasn't functional with a keyboard without the keyboard so there is a limiting factor now the next attempt in this project is to get it to operate with something like Android, with something which is essentially touch first. So that's the next challenge. Hopefully there's going to be a follow-up video where I am successful with that. Until then, that's all guys. Thank you very much for watching.